is a really weird viral video making the rounds. It appears to show an occult ritual taking place outside of the CERN facility in Geneva. Now, the video was filmed at night. It depicts a mock ritual human sacrifice. Several individuals are in black cloaks, and then they surround a woman who then appears to be stabbed. Now, the European Organization for Nuclear Research has launched an investigation into the video saying it's most likely a prank gone too far, right? Because these are scientists who apparently on their off time like to engage in uh, mock sacrifice just for funsies. So a CERN spokeswoman said that these scenes were filmed on our premises, but without official permission or knowledge, although indicating that those involved in the spoof did have access badges because CERN IDs are checked systematically at each entry to the CERN site, whether it's day or night. CERN does not condone this type of spoof, which can give rise to misunderstandings about the scientific nature of our work. And indeed, that's exactly what has happened. Apparently, these scientists were wanting to create some sort of a viral video, and it worked. But now there's all sorts of conspiracy theories percolating around the video, because this isn't the first time that CERN scientists have been involved in weird, bizarre, occultic videos. Uh, a film was made called Symmetry. It's a dance opera film shot inside CERN, and it depicts a modern physicist searching for the smallest primordial particle and uh, instead discovers a love without end. So what they do at CERN, uh, physicists and engineers there are probing for the fundamental structure of the universe. They're using the world's largest and most complex scientific instruments to study the basic constituents of matter, which are the fundamental particles. So CERN houses arguably one of the greatest inventions mankind has ever seen, the Large Hadron Collider. Now, the Large Hadron Collider is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. Uh, what it does is it, it has two high-energy particle beams traveling at close to the speed of light before they are made to collide. And according to the LHC's main engineer, Steve Myers, this is like firing two needles across the Atlantic and getting them to hit each other. So one of the experiments that's taking place uh, is the quest for the Higgs boson, or the God particle. This is believed to be essential for formation of the universe. And the CERN scientists believe they've actually discovered and created this Higgs boson in 2012. Uh, they discovered a new subatomic particle that possibly is this uh, much sought after Higgs boson. Now, of course, we have a lot of knowledge that can come out of this kind of technology, but it's also bringing a lot of fears. Specifically, a few years ago, there was a lot of concern about uh, creating a black hole, which could destroy life on Earth in its quest. And we know <laughs> mad scientists are perfectly okay with destroying Earth as long as they can play God. So of course, it seems fitting that this latest occult spoof was staged in front of a statue of the Hindu deity Shiva, the destroyer. Now, this statue is on permanent display at the complex. It was gifted to CERN from India. They were sort of celebrating uh, their decades-long association with CERN. But it's a very interesting statue, very symbolic uh, there. This is uh, the form of the dancing Lord Shiva. It's known as the Nataraja. And a lot of people have called this the dance of destruction. Um, it symbolizes Shakti or life force, and it represents Lord Shiva dancing the universe into existence, influencing it, and then eventually destroying it in preparation for a new universe. Our physical reality is a shadow of a larger reality. And I was blown away when I first saw that because that's exactly what the Bible's been saying all along. Einstein made scientific history by recognizing that we really live in four dimensions by adding time to the mix. Time is a physical property. We know from a variety of uh, background that we live in at least 10, that's the current uh, uh, dimensions. Four of them are directly, uh, uh, we can experience them. But we know there are six others that we can't get at directly, but we know they, we, by, we can infer their existence mathematically. What makes that provocative to people who have discovered that is that a Hebrew sage by the name of Nachmanides, back in the 13th century, uh, predicted that from studying the text of Genesis. He concluded that our universe has ten dimensions, only four are knowable, to use his term, and six are not knowable to us. And I find that fascinating because we've spent hundreds of millions of dollars on atomic accelerators, 
to discover what Nachmanides did by studying the text. All right, y'all. What's going on? We're back at it with another video, the highly requested CERN video. So we're going to jump right into it. Now, look, I came right in at this point um, on purpose because what he just said to end off that clip, I thought was very, very important to why all of this stuff is even happening in the first place. Now, if you listen closely, he said a man had studied Genesis in the Bible to understand the fact that our world consists of 10 dimensions, four dimensions that we can actually experience, six dimensions that are behind the veil. Basically what we talk about how, you know, there's a difference between the physical and spiritual world. Those other six dimensions lie behind that spiritual world, basically the veil that we can't see with our naked eye, right? Now, something that was very important, what he said, he said, this man found this out by just studying the text. He said, these other scientists and physicists who want to actually see this stuff proven, they don't just want to read it to find it out. They want to actually touch it. They want to see it. They want to produce it. They want to know how. They want to know how. They want to know where. They want to know how to tap into these dimensions, these hidden dimensions that we can't access. So they spent hundreds of millions of dollars on accelerators, particle accelerators like CERN all around the country to find out the stuff that he found out just by studying texts. And he laughed it off. Now, that is very important, people. Now, why is that important? It's because it gives us a dive into basically the ego of man and how far man will go and basically, you know, be his own demise. You know, because obviously as humans, you know, we meet our own demise on our own. And this is a prime example of scientists and physicists at CERN and, you know, just scientists across the world that try and dig into this stuff, that try and dig into these dark dimensions, knowing that them trying to dig into the dimensions, that they are, you know, inviting things here into this world that they don't even have a clue about. Because they tell you, they tell you right out of their mouths. And um, I can play another clip where that I've also, I've shown on this channel, I think it was on the Portals of Darkness video. I can play the clip again in this video because it was about dimensions and CERN, but it just tied all into the Mandela effect, CERN, extra dimensions, and so on and so on. Basically, it's like a plot right out of Stranger Things, the show that is very popular that I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen. Um, because they give us CERN examples and they use CERN in a lot of movies. Stranger Things probably being the biggest example that we can go off of, right? What he was saying is basically, yes, there are these massively intelligent entities out there, but they're not good, they're not evil. They just don't give a shit about you even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now... These things that we're summoning into the world now... ...are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. Now, a ten-dimensional universe, really. And I'll show you where that was first discovered, and it wasn't in the scientific laboratory. Ten-dimensional universe. And we, when we get to read the Bible, we discover that the most of what we know about the creation is after Genesis 3. We know very little about the creation prior to Genesis 3. Why? Because in Genesis 3, we have the fall of Adam, and as a result, God announces a curse. And there is a view, prevalent among some scholars, that, if you, that when he announced that curse, it fractured the creation into two parts. Uh, from, uh, they took the ten dimensions and split it into four plus six. Those four dimensions that you and I experience, the three spatial dimensions in time, we call the physical universe. This podium, whatever, we think that we, that's part of, of a four-dimensional environment. Three spatial dimensions and time. These other six dimensions, 
we glibly relegate to this spiritual universe. And it may be that that's really synonymous, or effectively synonymous, with the six dimensions that are not directly accessible to us. And, uh, but they are the uh, target of study by our particle physicists. And I'm sure you'd be amazed at what's being spent to, go, to understand that. And so the idea that this, is the, this, this partitioning is an effect of the fall, uh, uh, the curse in Genesis 3, it, in, it introduces a concept in mathematics called entropy or randomness. And uh, in, Ro in Romans chapter 8, verse 21, it speaks of the bondage of de decay, that the creation is subject to the bondage of decay, and it associates that with the curse. So there's some of us that are interested in physics that suspect, we obviously don't know, but we suspect that the concept of entropy was introduced as part of the Genesis 3. And uh, the universe was fractured then, in a sense, the separation of the four and six dimensions. That separates what we call the physical and the spiritual world. Those are metaphors reign <laughs> where s mysteries reside. All right, y'all. So the clip where he was talking about them summoning beings into this universe and them not necessarily knowing what they're summoning, but they do know that they're going to look at us how we look at ants and they're not going to care about us how we don't care about ants. So y'all heard that, right? So that's why I related it back to Stranger Things, because they put this stuff in movies, they put it in shows, they put the CERN machine, the Hadron Collider, they put it in multiple shows and movies um, just to continuously let you know what is going on. I think even all the way back in Angels and Demons, CERN was in that movie. So, um, and I think that was the movie with Tom Hanks. I think that might have been around 2009 to 2012. I can't quite remember. But it just goes to show you that they put it in everything, in everything. So, you know, we can't dismiss basically what they're trying to tell us that they're doing. And and a guy who is basically behind those D-Wave um, quantum computers and stuff, I forget his name, the guy that was talking about it in the clip with the glasses on, he's sitting there telling you, he's telling you what they're trying to do using the CERN machine, basically. One of the things that they're trying to do at least which you know which is basically amplifying evil and um trying to recreate the big bang now that is obviously for scientists and physicists who believe that this universe was created um by the big bang so you would have to fully believe in that to even fully believe in what they're doing and to fully believe that it's actually scientific and not something that's kind of sinister and trying to actually find out what piece this universe together because now which is why which is why i didn't play certain clips about cern because a lot of it is the same thing people basically breaking down what cern is trying to find when it comes to the big bang like you may have heard the analogy that they're trying to find what pieces together the fabric of the universe basically um basically they're trying to find say um i think a, a good analogy i heard was that you know if if you you break down your house blah 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 and then you get down to the building blocks of your house and you see that glue is what um was the building block of your house then basically what CERN is trying to do, they don't want to know the hardened state of glue. They want to know what was the liquid state of glue. What made that liquid state? What made glue glue in its liquid form? That is basically what they are trying to find out about the universe. How was the universe created? How was it created? Why is there more matter than antimatter? Or at least what they can find as far as antimatter because they say there's an overabundance of antimatter compared to matter i mean there's an overabundance of matter compared to antimatter which then that is what they are actually questioning why do we exist why were we created in the first place they're not they're not like asking god why are you know why were we created why do we exist they're just trying to find out on their own like they don't believe for for the most part they don't believe in it but it also goes to show you that god is showing his hand through their science because they're finding things that 
ultimately prove a creator. Because that's why they're telling you they don't they, they don't actually know. They're like, you know, they just don't know. They can't really figure it out. It's really they do know. They just don't want to admit that there is a God behind it. There is an ultimate creator behind all of this, you know. And the fact that the reason why they're probably really never going to find what created this universe is because the universe was actually spoken into existence. So <laughs> if if God spoke the universe into existence, there's no way for these men to find what actually holds this universe together. Now, if there's some kind of element out there or some kind of particle or, you know, I'm, I ain't the smartest guy when it comes to all this stuff, but I do understand it. But when it, if it comes to something out there that they find that God just so happened to hide and then one day let let us find that this is a little piece of what he used to, you know, piece all this together with his words, then I guess, you know, that 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 will be the day. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because I feel like anything that these scientists and physicists do find, God is allowing them to find it so he can ultimately be, you know, like have the laugh, laugh, like, you know, the last laugh, like, ha I do exist. I'm going to let you find this so you can actually know I do exist because you're still not going to find what you think you are looking for. And in that, you know, in that exact reason is where you're going to find me. <laughs> You get it? Like in them not finding what they think they want to find, they're going to find God, actually. And that is how God sometimes works. You know, and, um, you know, e e even though those those kind of things, like I said earlier in the video, they will ultimately cause your demise. But God's hand will still always be revealed, even though, you know, we we definitely we're going to continue to, you know, um, try to pierce these other dimensions. We're never going to stop. It's just in man to do so. And I guess that's just the <laughs> like the Bora Bora effect um, or, you know, the snake biting his own tail where everything is just a cycle and everything repeats itself. But um but yeah, so that is basically what CERN is trying to do. And another point with the uh, antimatter and them basically amplifying evil is because um, we are basically made up of everything the universe is made up of as well. So if the universe consists of matter and antimatter, we as humans, we also consist of matter and antimatter. And what CERN is basically doing is amplifying that antimatter, which is why um, I think there was like a story where wherever they were actually holding the most amount of antimatter, it would affect the people in that area. Because basically, it's why I say amplifying evil. They basically, anywhere, uh, I would guess, a good amount of antimatter is held or being used for whatever it's being used for it amplifies the antimatter inside of you antimatter is basically um it's like the darkness inside of you we are made up of lightness and darkness <laughs> we're we're both you know we we have duality we have a good side we have a bad side we can be great we can be angels but we can also be you know evil toward each other so Antimatter represents that in a sense, and that amplified inside of you causes you to act, you know, I guess irrational sometimes. Um, it, it amplifies the evil, and that is basically what they're doing. <laughs> All of it, in a sense, is just amplifying evil, you know, tapping into the pits of hell and those other dark dimensions.
And when I first found out about all this stuff, man, honestly, it blew my mind, you know. So to people that don't understand this stuff quite fully yet, or if you're, you know, you just now coming across CERN and just now learning about this stuff, it's cool. Just continue to watch it, continue to listen. And that's all I can say, because eventually it's going to register in your head and you'll just understand all of this stuff that's going on. You might be able to tell somebody else, you know, um, because it, it, it still it blows my mind. Like, this is my favorite stuff to talk about, kind of like this is definitely up there. Like when we get to talking about the dimensions and all that other stuff. I feel like I could go all day, like for real. Like um, I definitely like talking about this kind of stuff a lot. So uh, we might could even do a part two to this video because I feel like it might be some things that I forgot to say because I feel like there's just so much to cover when it comes to CERN. But um, but yeah, man, um, I didn't want to play too many clips in this video just because a lot of people repeat the same things that I could just tell y'all right off the top of my head. So um, so yeah, man, with that being said, that's the CERN video. I hope y'all enjoyed that video. Um. You know, let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. I got this video, you know, out to y'all pretty late. I really wanted to get this video out earlier in the day. So I do apologize, um, you know, but better now than never, right? So anyways, man, with that being said, I really do appreciate y'all. Y'all already know what's going on. It's Black Balloon, and I'm going to see y'all soon. All right, I'm out.